You know, Mike, when you're posting these videos, it seems like you're dope doing two a day, two by two. Call us Moses. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing all right. You know, of all your intros, that uh, wasn't the best. I feel like the best are when we get right into it, right? So let's just hop right in with Dylan Moses here. The linebacker from Alabama. First thing in terms of his background, uh, didn't participate at the pro day from what I saw. So the only real thing to talk about is that he missed 2019 with an ACL tear. So uh, we've talked about it before. We're not doctors. That's not being factored into our grade. But Mike, is it a concern, first of all, obviously to a degree, but coming back in 2020 and at least putting up a relatively productive season, it has to sort of lessen those concerns, doesn't it? Yeah, it's always a concern, especially ACL. You know, it seems like it's something that's always lingering. Um, but no, coming back, being productive, I think, you know, out of a linebacker position is one you can get away with it. Other positions that might be a little bit more based off athleticism might be a little bit more concerned. But um, to the back of my head, but no, obviously not. Especially saying he, he kind of did back up that sophomore season um, with his last season at Alabama um, with some real productive numbers. No, you know, that being said, that's an interesting thing to note. That sophomore season after that, um, a lot of people thought he was going to be a first-round linebacker prior to the ACL tear. Uh, then before the season in 2019, obviously just before week one, I believe, tears it. And then now I'm seeing him outside of the top 100. So it's a pretty interesting contrast because I'm not necessarily sure just how much the ACL affected him in that regard, but it seems like he's falling down boards drastically. So in terms of where I would have him on my board, ultimately – obviously dependent on my grade. The thing with him is I just don't necessarily know what he does incredibly well besides his just general athleticism. Um, I would say he has good range in pursuit in terms of sideline to sideline, kind of on cue, not quite to the uh, standards set by Micah and Owusu, but sort of in that Nick Bolton range, I would most certainly say. Uh, in coverage, I thought he was solid. I, not, I wouldn't necessarily want him going again, man up against the more dynamic running backs in the league, but I think that you can get away with him uh, playing that sort of middle zone uh, from time to time. In terms of block shedding, I would say that was actually his weakest area. Uh, at 6'1", 225, with some minimal technique in terms of stacking and shedding, it just didn't work, right? He was he was getting eaten up quite a bit, which I would say was uh, even more disappointing considering the sort of space eaters in front of him, right? You would hope that uh, he'd be able to, hey, just evade that one block and bring down running backs for a ton of splash plays, but it more so seemed that he was also another guy who was, who was kind of eating space from time to time. Otherwise, in terms of his IQ and awareness, I thought it was solid. Again, not quite up to the par of other guys we've seen. Um, there were some plays, again, where he would just get lost, and, and it just seems like, what are you necessarily reading, or are you just out there playing and hoping to, to run into the ball carrier? Maybe not to the degree, again, of Nick Bolton, but I, I still think it's a slight concern. Uh, at the next level. Otherwise, in terms of his quickness, I thought he was quick. The change of direction was what got me a little bit. I felt like maybe you could see some residual effects to that ACL potentially, because, you know, when he's, when he's taking a step towards, you know, say the B gap, and then he realizes, oh, I made the wrong read and then tries to cut it back. I just didn't think we saw a ton of explosiveness there. Uh, finishing and tackling though, I did think he was good when he did get to the ball carrier. It didn't really feel like there were very many missed tackles. Um, and then other than that, I gave him a three and a half on sides, which might be a little bit high. I think you can put some weight on with his frame, though, if that is a concern and a four on athleticism. So, Mike, came up to a 72.5. Where are you at on Moses? Are you uh, higher? Are you lower? Do you seem to uh, think he's out of outside the top 100, as some other people might have claimed? Or, or where are you sort of at here? Yeah, sometimes I'd like to disagree with you, but uh, this won't be it. I think that's right where he falls. Uh, I think that's 72.5. Um, it basically explains kind of some of our thoughts. He's just not up to the par that some of the other linebackers that we've, you know, taken a look at. And especially, I don't think he excels in really any one area. There was nothing that really stood out to me. Yeah, he, he was proficient in a couple areas that maybe some other linebackers we've taken a look at were lacking. But um, if you're taking, you know, you just want a pure athlete, you're going to be looking at Michael Parsons and he can do a lot of the other things better. If you're looking for, you know, speed, quickness, sideline to sideline speed, um, it's not Moses. It's going to be a Wolves who, uh, who you're really looking for that, um, you know, strength, block shedding, be ability to play, you know, physical, Zayvon Collins, um, Bolton. I'm not sure exactly what <laughs> they both kind of had the same like similarities, but I think just Bolton just looked a little bit more, you know, a little bit better of an athlete. It had some better range, um, just a little bit more, you know, playmaking ability than Dylan Moses did. But I don't think by no means Dylan Moses is, is a scrub. And I think he has a place in, in this league. 
Uh, maybe not starting right off the bat. I think there's a lot of areas he can work at, but um, even as a you know third down linebacker, if you do have maybe a, a bigger body, having him you know play that middle zone that you were talking about, I think he has that ability come day, come day one. But um, yeah, I think 72.5 just kind of explains how we feel about him. It's slightly above average. No, I certainly agree. That was a good way to put it. I don't think that he's uh, at the top tier of any individual category or any individual really prototype. In terms of the big board then, as you can see, 75.04 has him right uh, as sort of that fringe second, third round guy in the middle of day two. I know like I kind of alluded to just by example, PFF had him as their number 144 prospect. I don't think that he's uh, in that range by any means. I certainly do think that there's some value to him, uh, particularly as a Mike linebacker, if you're weak there. Um, I know, I don't think he necessarily has the range and quickness and sort of ability to uh, run guys down in pursuit that you maybe want on the weak side. And I don't necessarily think that he plays physical enough to be on the strong side, but I do think that if you have a relatively strong linebacker core already, and are just looking for somebody to sort of plug and play that can do a little bit of everything pretty well, I think Moses could be a solid day two selection. So Mike kind of looking at the big board, uh, you know, with your own thoughts, do you think you agree with that? Or would you say lower or higher relative to these guys that you're seeing them on the screen with here? I think right there, I'd probably put them a little bit lower. Um, probably, you know, my grade would end up being closer to early round three. Um, there's probably some guys in that third round grade that I might be taking above him just for pure sailing sakes. Um, some guys that we, we were talking about was away and McNeil um, just kind of have that higher ceiling, but Moses probably has that higher floor. So I think that's right. At this point, we're getting really nitpicky. It's a matter of a couple points that's really differentiating these players. So um, I think right there. Uh, and if a team took him late in round two or early round three, I think that's right where he belongs. I think it's a, you know, really solid um, value at the pick. No, I definitely agree. I think that a guy like Oway, a guy like McNeil, uh, you can even say a guy like Kylan Hill, just by example, I would say that they have a greater boom potential, right? Like if they hit, they will, they will be better uh, most likely than Dylan Moses. But I also think that they have potential to not hit, right? Because they uh, are a little bit more raw in those regards. Whereas Moses, I feel, has that safer floor, as you said. But uh, with that being said, I really don't think we have much else for you guys today. I'd say he's just a step, uh, maybe two steps below a guy like Nick Bolton, but he's certainly better uh, than some of the other guys that we're going to get into here today. So um, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like. Make sure uh, if you have any comments of your own if you think Moses is a scrub if you think he is the next Luke Keekly, drop it in the comment section down below we love to have discussions uh, with you guys there especially if you do think he's the next Luke Keekly. I'd love to hear uh, exactly why otherwise if you did enjoy this video make sure you subscribe uh, we're on the road to 100 subscribers only 16 away you could make it 15 just got to click that little subscribe button so Mike you got anything else I think we mic'd up and we mic it out Deuces. peace guys